And you can see that when we call 3000, we end up ringing the phone at directory number 1000. But because the directory number 1000 didn't get answered, the call rolls over to the phone with directory number 1001. In this video, I will be talking about hunt pilots, hunt lists, and line groups, and what this feature or dial plan element, whatever you want to call it, what it does is essentially lets us have a contact center-like setup in CUCM. That is because when you set up a hunt pilot with a hunt list and some line groups, and you put directory numbers into that line group, it allows you to have a single number which can ring multiple different endpoints. Let's say you have a section for your IT support and there's only about six people there, let's say. You can tell people, dial 3000 to contact our support team and then when they dial that, that 3000, it's going to hit that hunt pilot, which is associated with the hunt list and that's associated with whatever line groups, then you have different algorithms in there. You can have it be circular, you can have it be longest idle, you can even have it just be broadcast where it rings all of the different phones for your different employees in the department. If you want to learn more about this setup, you can check out the system configuration guide. Specifically, it's going to be in the configure hunt pilot section of the configure the dial plan section. And in the chapter contents, we can see that they, they give us a hunt pilot overview and a hunt pilot configuration task flow, which the direction of a phone call would hit a hunt pilot, which would then go down to a hunt list. And then that would get sent out to the line group and then sent out to the endpoints. But like most things that we configure in CUCM, we configure it backwards from the way that it actually flows. You first have to have phones with directory numbers before you can configure the line group. You first have to have the line group before you can configure the hunt list and associate it with the line groups. And then once you have all of that, you can configure the hunt pilot, which points to the hunt list. So just understand that the, the distribution of a call through a hunt pilot, hunt list line group goes in that direction, pilot list groups, but configuration goes the other direction, groups list pilots. We also have a section here that talks about wildcards and there's, there's plenty of restrictions around the hunt pilots, which you can see some of it here where they talk about line groups cannot point to CTI ports and CTI route points. But it also talks a bit down at the bottom about how it interacts with single number reach, it talks about call queuing, and then also it talks about things like uh, iPhones and Androids for Jabber. But again, if you want to know more about all of this, I will have a link to this document down in the description of my video. Feel free to go ahead and check that out and further your understanding of this dial plan element. Now I'll actually jump into doing the configuration and then we're going to test it. I'll probably even pull the traces for it and maybe do a trace reading video about, um, hunt pilots. So we'll go into call routing route slash hunt and we'll do line group. You can see that I don't have any here. So we'll go ahead and click add new. I'm going to name this S J underscore L G and that stands for San Jose line group. We have the RNA reversion timer, which if I remember correctly, that's going to determine how many seconds call manager will wait for somebody to answer a phone before ringing the next phone in the line group. And we can go under help this page again, you know, with the documentation that we looked at earlier, that's one way to read up on and learn more about hunt pilots, hunt lists and line groups. But these help pages are also great. So if we take a look at the RNA reversion timer, it is in seconds. And it says here, after which unified CM will distribute a call to the next available or idle member of this line group or to the next line group if the call is not answered 
And then it goes on to talk about some other settings for if you have multiple line groups and you want the call to be able to try another line group if the first line group doesn't work. We'll go ahead and close that out. I'm going to leave the distribution algorithm to longest idle time. And then they ask you here, what do you want to do if the call is not answered? All right, so it says, try next member, then try next group and hunt list, which is what we just saw the help page talking about. You can set it to not go to the next group. You can even have it skip the remaining members in the current group, which I don't know why anybody would really want to do that. And then you can go directly to the next group. And then the one that I think is probably least often used is that if somebody doesn't answer their phone, just stop hunting for other people. Stop ringing the other calls in the line group. I don't know. I don't even kind of question why that's even in there. I wonder what the logic behind adding that was. You can also see that there's options for if somebody's busy, if they're not available. Down here is where we can add directory numbers to our line group, which I'm going to select all the ones for San Jose. Let me hit shift and select those. So I've got everything that is a directory number in the 1000 to 1009 range, and you just click add to line group. And then here we can see which directory numbers are added. And then down here we can see the selected directory numbers for our current line group members. If you wanted to remove any of them, you just click like that. I wonder if a double click will add it back. It did. Now 1004 got added to the bottom though, so I'll put it back where it belongs. And then I'll just save this. As you can see, configuring the line group really isn't difficult. There's not much to it. With the hunt list, you'll see it's even more simple. You just go under call routing route slash hunt, and then you go to hunt list. You'll see I don't have anything here. Click add new, and we'll give it a name, which I'll go with San Jose underscore RL for route list. And then you do have to give it a CMG, which is a call manager group. I'll give it the San Jose call manager group. The reason why you need to do that is because route lists will actually register to the CUCM. It'll be either registered, unregistered. I don't know if there's any other states for it, but that's that's a very important thing to know about route lists. Especially if a call is failing, it could be due to the route list being unregistered. We'll just go ahead and save it. And then we'll add a line group here. We'll select the one that I just created, click save. And we get a pop-up letting us know that we must restart the hunt list for changes to be in effect. So now I'll go ahead and for good measure, hit apply config, close that out, hit reset, and hit reset. Now the thing is, this checkbox really says, really makes it so that I don't have to do the reset, but I'm going to do it anyway because of that prompt. Now we can click the go button over here to go back to the find slash list. We do have our route list and it's also registered and it's registered to sub A because we used the call manager group for San Jose, which prioritizes the sub A. I'll now move to configuring the hunt pilot by going under call routing route slash hunt and hunt pilot. Click find to show that I don't have any right now. And if you hit add new, I'm going to give it the directory number 3000 in the internal partition. The next thing that we need to do is actually add the hunt list, which I just realized that I gave that an RL for route list. I'll go back and change that later. Now, if you come down here, I'm going to change the maximum hunt timer to 20 seconds. Don't forget that the help pages are great if you wanted to know more about these different parameters. And then there's a lot more stuff that you can do here, right? So on the hunt list, there's really not much you can do on the line group. There's a good amount of stuff you can do in there and the hunt pilot, right? If you can if you combine the hunt pilot parameters with the line group parameters, there's really just so much you can do in here, including uh, queuing calls. And then going down a, a little bit further, you can do things that deal with digit manipulation and uh, automatic alternate routing. 
but I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to give it the directory number, the partition, the hunt list, and change the maximum hunt timer. So I'll click save on this. And then I'm going to go back and change that hunt list to have the proper name. Save, apply config once that's done. Okay, reset, reset, close. And then let's go back to check my hunt pilot to make sure that it picked up the change, which it did. Now I also want to make sure that that's registered. And I guess I went too far with that. I need to be on this page. Yep, it's registered. Now we are ready to actually start placing test calls to this. But before I place the test call, I'm going to get RTMT set up and ready for me to pull the traces. I have RTMT up here. I'm going to go to trace and log central, collect files. And then once this loads up, I'm, the only thing I'm going to select is the call manager traces and I'm going to do it for all nodes. And then we'll move over here to the last page, relative range, browse, we'll go to the desktop. Uh, I think I have a folder in here, yep, lab traces. And I'll call this uh, hunt pilot. I'm going to uncompress the logs, which typically I, I only do that in lab environments. I don't really do that when I'm troubleshooting an issue in a production environment, simply because it takes longer to collect the logs. And I don't want my test call to end up being overwritten if it's a very, very busy cluster. Now I'll jump over to the phones that I have next to me and I'll go to directory number 2001 and have that call out to 3000, which is our hunt pilot. And you can see that when we call 3000, we end up ringing the phone at directory number 1000. But because the directory number 1000 didn't get answered, the call rolls over to the phone with directory number 1001. They didn't answer and they're really, even though I added 1000 through 1009 into the line group, these are the only two phones in that line group that are registered. So when 1001 didn't answer, we're left hearing busy tone on 2001, which if we were to dig into the traces, we'd see why that is. And now that the call's complete, I'm going to click finish here in RTMT. And again, I have a, a trace reading series that I've been going through. And so if you wanted to see what the hunt pilot is like in the logs, go ahead and check that out. I'll actually add it here to the video right up top in the suggested videos. Thank you for watching. I hope there was something of value here in this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.